Praise be Jesus Christ. Greetings and blessings from Mount Carmel Center. My name is Father Jorge Cabrera of Mary Immaculate. Uh, hello again. I know it has been some time since the last time I uploaded a video to our channel. As some of you may know, uh, we the Discalced Carmelite Friars have been in very important meetings lately. We have been in meetings for two weeks. Uh, we were having what we call our provincial chapter, which is a, a series of meetings that we have every three years in which we reevaluate our life, our mission, our vocation, and the way we're serving God and others. And so that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons why I have, I, I have not been uploading videos. But uh, thank you so much because so many of you have been praying for us, uh, or have been so generous in offering your prayers and sacrifices for the fruitfulness of our meetings. And I can truly tell you that uh, your prayers were felt uh, it really flowed beautifully, our provincial chapter, and we thank all of you because we know for certain that it, it, you know, it was because of your prayers. So thank you so much. We are constantly, I am personally constantly humbled by the love and support that uh, all of you, so many people, uh, uh, show to us constantly. Very generous. You have been so generous to us, not only during this time of meetings, but always, and also during this time of pandemic. So many of you being so attentive to our needs, God bless you. Uh, know that we really appreciate that and that we constantly ask the Lord to reward you and to multiply uh, all that generosity to you in blessings and, and grace and, and, and good health. So thank you so much, God bless you all. Uh, today I want to uh, share a reflection on today's first reading, uh, which is from the first book of Kings. And uh, if you have not read it, please, I, I encourage you to do so, because I'm not going to go into the details of the reading. I'm just going to try to focus on a particular aspect of it. And the, the main character of the reading is the prophet Elijah. And of course, it's almost impossible for me not to comment on that since I'm a Carmelite, right? And Elijah is one of the main figures in our spirituality. So anyhow, in the reading, it says that uh, the prophet Elijah, he's at Mount Carmel, and he's about to offer God a sacrificial offering of a young bull. Uh, but he says to the people that are present that, uh, unlike the custom, he's not going to set the sacrifice on fire after he sacrifices the animal on the altar. He's going to pray to God, and God will come and consume the sacrifice sending fire. God will send the fire. So uh, that's what he's going to do. And not only that, after he uh, uh, sacrifices the animal on the altar, he asks people to pour a significant amount of water over the sacrifice to the point that a trench that he asked to be dug uh, around the altar is filled with water. So anyhow, it's very, very wet and there's water around it. And lo and behold, when he begins praying to God, asking the Lord to accept the sacrificial offering, as he predicted, fire comes from heaven and consumes completely not only the animal, but the rock of the altar, the wood are consumed, and even the water is consumed, it evaporates completely, it disappears. So God sends his fire from heaven and completely uh, consumes this sacrifice. So. I want to make a connection between that reading and the gospel reading that we heard in uh, Pentecost Sunday, which is from the book of John, the, the gospel of John, when our Lord, the risen Lord, makes himself present in the midst of the apostles, despite the fact that the doors were closed and locked, and despite the fact that the apostles were afraid. So. In the, in, the first, in the reading from the uh, first book of Kings, the water was not an impediment. The water nor the absence of human fire, human uh, produced fire, were an impediment for God to consume that sacrifice with the fire of his spirit. And in the gospel reading of John, the locked doors and the fear of the apostles were not impediments for the risen Christ to make himself present and to breathe his Holy Spirit on the apostles. So I was reflecting on those two readings and I was pondering the following. Uh, so many times we 
uh, we, those of us who try to follow the Lord uh, and live the gospel, so many times we feel discouraged because we believe, we think somehow, that because we're not perfect, because we have shortcomings, because we have weaknesses, because we have sins uh, and limitations, that God will not be pleased with us and will not accept the sacrificial offering we make of ourselves to Him. That He's going to demand of us to first be perfect, so then He can accept the sacrifice. And that is not true. Uh, in the same way, again, that the lack of human-produced fire and the presence of water were not obstacles for God to consume the sacrifice that Elijah offered. And in the same way that locked doors and the fear of the apostles were not impediments for our risen Lord to make himself present among them and to breathe the Holy Spirit upon them, in the same way, God will not allow himself to be stopped by our weaknesses, sins, and and failures. You know, I'm going back to the little way of our dear Saint, Saint Therese. Uh, it is important that we do our part, uh, like she says. It is important that we try our best, but we are weak, uh, and God knows that. And as long as we do our best and try to do our best, even though our best will most of the time, if not always, will be imperfect and with failings and with, you know, uh, limitations, God will receive our sacrifice and will trans consume us in one way or another uh, with the fire of His Holy Spirit. He will send His fire from, from heaven, which is the Holy Spirit, and consume us either slowly or gradually, and we may see the fruits of that uh, fire of the Spirit in our lives here or maybe uh, after, you know, after we die in eternity. But he, God is faithful. And St. Therese is a witness to that. She offered herself as an imperfect victim to God when she did the offering to merciful love. So let us not be discouraged. You know, God is accepting in His mercy imperfect uh, victims uh, of sacrifice. Uh, he only needs for us to do the best we can and to trust Him. To trust the mercy He has revealed to us in His Son, Jesus Christ, um, who has sent us the Holy Spirit. So, my brothers and sisters, as we continue our journey, let us remember this. And let us continue to strive in our littleness, as St. Therese would say, our poverty, to do our best, which in itself will never be enough. But God will supply for the rest. He will supply for that fire that will consume us and will transform us into Himself despite the impediments of our weaknesses and failings. May God bless you. Uh, we will continue to pray for you in these times of difficulty. And with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever.